If you've got a D3500, D3400 or a similar Nikon DSLR camera, make sure you stick around because I've got some great tips that are going to help you get more from your camera. Hi, Paul here from Photogenius. Welcome to my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get even more from your Nikon DSLR camera when using the live view mode. And I'm going to be showing you how you can use live view to take better photos. But if you like making movies, we're also going to look at the video mode. So let's start by looking at live view for photographers. Now this is the Nikon D3500 and to turn live view on, all I've got to do is pull the little lever marked LV towards me. The live view turns on, you should see the display on the back of the camera showing you and giving you a live feed from the sensor in real time. Now with some of the older Nikon DSLRs like this D3400, there's a button on the back of the camera marked LV. Now live view will work in any of the camera modes, so it doesn't matter whether you're shooting full auto, you're using the scene modes or using the manual modes, it's pretty much the same. And my first tip is using the info button to change the LCD display. So when you first turn on the live view, this is the screen you're likely to see. This screen is the normal standard default screen. It doesn't show us too much, but it does show us what shutter, aperture and ISO we're currently using. Pressing the info button allows us to change the screen. This is called the grid screen or the grid view. You'll notice these grid lines appear and these are very useful for helping you when it comes to composition. Another press of the button, the third screen I call the info view because it now it gives us more information including battery level, different settings like the focus settings and so on. And finally, press again, this is screen four and I call this the video or movie view. Notice how the image now has a wide screen look. Now when you first turn live view on, looking at the screen you should see a square. This is your focus area, so your camera will focus where the square is. It's normally in the middle of the display. But of course if your subject is not in the middle of your composition, you can move the square off to the sides. Let me show you how it works. So in the center of the LCD screen you see a red square, this is your focus area. It's currently set on the character in the middle. Now if I want to focus on one of the characters to the side, I want to be able to move the square over to the side and you do this using the multi-selector tool. So if I press or hold it down over to the right it will move to the right, if I press up it will move up and so on. Pressing the shutter button halfway down will allow us to focus. When the square goes green the subject is in focus. Pressing the OK button will default the focus back to the center of the LCD screen. Now when you use Live View, you will find that the focus can be a bit slow and a bit sluggish. So this can be a problem if you're photographing something that's moving fast, like sports for example. Now this isn't an issue when doing landscape photography because you're probably going to be on a tripod and focus is something you can spend a bit more time on. So I probably wouldn't recommend using the Live View for sports and moving subjects, I go back to using the viewfinder, but for most other things, non-moving subjects in particular, live view is perfect. Now what you can also do is you can also select additional focus modes, and to get to these, you use the I button. So let me show you how this now works. So the I button is a bit like a shortcut to some of the key features of the camera. Here I want to change the focus mode, so I press down on the multi-selector, Press the OK button to select and we have three options. AFS is autofocus single or single servo autofocus, perfect for landscapes, hence the photo here of a tree. Now if you're shooting a moving subject we have continuous focus or full time servo. Again the picture is of a kid on a bike, so perfect for moving subjects. The next one over is manual focus and we'll be coming back to this later on in the video. I'm going to set it back to the default, press OK and it's done. Now move over to the right and we have autofocus area mode, press OK, and we've got a whole bunch of options here too. We have face priority, which will track faces. We have a wider focus area, as well as a normal or smaller focus area, and we have subject tracking as well. I'm gonna set it to my default, which is wide. Press OK. We can change the white balance on the camera, and as you see, this affects the colors. I'm going to go back to auto. There's a whole bunch of other things you can change here, including the ISO settings, exposure compensation, and so on. This is all done by using the I button, a really great shortcut. 
Now the next feature I want to show you is digital zoom. This is really useful when your camera is struggling to focus. Sometimes cameras struggle to focus when things are very um, lacking in contrast, or maybe when the light is poor. Two good examples would be the stars and the moon at night. Now this is easily fixed by using digital zoom. And the first thing you have to do to take advantage of this is put the camera into the manual focus mode. So basically you're turning off the order focus. Now, if your lens has a MFA switch on the side of the lens, you simply switch that to M or MF. But as with these newer cameras, there's no switch on the lens. So in the live view mode, you press the I button, you select the focus modes and you go to MF. Press OK to set. Let me show you how it works. Digital zoom allows you to be very precise about your focus. We start by pressing the plus button. You can press this up to five times. One, two, three, four, five. And you can clearly see now that the subject is out of focus. Now you can move the focus point around using the multi selector tool. And once you've selected what you want to focus on, you simply reach around to the focus ring on the lens and adjust the focus ring until the subject looks pin sharp. Once it's sharp and you're ready to go, you press the OK button and you're done. Later in the video, I'm going to show you how I use the manual focus mode to do this effect. This in the video and movie world is called rack focus and I think it looks pretty cool. Now, if you're using the live view mode and the camera also in the manual mode, you can press the info button to display your camera's meter. This meter allows you to see how your exposure is looking. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to start by changing the camera mode to manual. The M in the corner of the screen here confirms. And here you will see your light meter. Now if you don't see this, it's because you need to change the view because you won't see this on every page. You need the info page. And if we look at the meter here, you'll see a minus side and a plus side and a zero in the middle. Now this is your camera's meter, which is currently telling us we're going to overexpose our image. Changing either the shutter, aperture or ISO will allow us to affect and change our exposure. Now because we're getting too much light into the camera, I'm going to simply increase the shutter speed by dialing to the right with the dial on the back of the camera. And if you watch carefully, the meter will start to adjust. Once the market is in the middle, we're ready to take our picture. Now a question that I do get asked a lot in relation to Nikon cameras like these is I'm using live view mode, I'm using the camera in full manual but my functions are restricted. I can't change the aperture and the slowest shutter speed I can get to is 1 60th of a second. This is easily fixed by changing your video and movie settings. So I'm in live view and you can clearly see I've got the manual mode selected which should allow me to change the shutter, aperture and ISO. But annoyingly, my F number, which is my aperture position, I cannot change. And my shutter speed, whilst I can certainly increase it, I can't go below 60th of a second. And this can be quite annoying. So to fix this, we press the menu button. We go to the shooting menu, movie settings, press OK. And we want to select manual movie settings and turn this off. Press the shutter button halfway down to get back to our live view. We can now change the F number, which is the aperture, to whatever we like. And we can now adjust the shutter speed to whatever we like. And of course, once we've done this and balanced the light meter, we can now take our picture. Now shooting full manual is not going to be for everybody, but it does give you more creative control over your camera. If things like aperture, shutter speed and ISO seem a bit scary, don't worry, I've made separate videos on all three of those and I'll put links below this video so you can check them out later. Now we're going to look at using Live View to record video. Now for this it's pretty straightforward, the setup process is the same. You've got to turn the Live View on first of all and then what I recommend doing is pressing the info button until you see the video view. Now you'll know when you see the video view because you'll get gray bars appearing at the top and the bottom of the screen. So you get this wide view and that's because it's showing you or it's reflecting what the camera will actually record. So to start recording my video, I begin by pressing the shutter button halfway down just as I would if I was taking a picture. 
The camera should beep, that indicates focus is done, and then I press the red record button on the top of the camera and the camera starts to record. Now, as I move my camera around, it's adjusting the exposure for me. So if I move to a shady place, it will increase the exposure. And if I move towards maybe a window, it will decrease the exposure. So it's constantly adjusting the exposure. And this is the same in uh, the auto modes, the scene modes, and actually also in the manual modes. But of course, if you wanna be in control of the exposure, all you gotta do is go into the menu and turn the manual movie settings to on. Now there is a really cool and fun feature built into the Nikon D3500 and D3400 and this is the effects options. Now you can use this in live view both when taking still images or as I'm doing here video and to select this all you got to do is turn the camera mode dial on the top to the effects option and then you simply turn the main control dial on the back of the camera to select the effect you wanna choose. Now, we're not gonna go over all of them. There's a whole bunch of them to play with. High key, low key, there's a really cool night vision effect. Um, this you're seeing here is called photo illustration, but the one I'm gonna to demonstrate to you is selective color. So I begin by putting the camera in the effects mode and all I've gotta do now is turn the dial on the back of the camera to select the different effects. Vivid, pop, photo illustration, toy effect. There's a whole bunch, but we're gonna stop and have a play with selective color. Now I press okay to select, and you'll see a little white square in the middle of the frame. Now this square is falling on the green shirt of the middle character, just about here. Now this means I can select this color. I do this by pressing up, and you'll see over to the left, green appears in the little square. And the image has now gone black and white with the exception of the green color. So that is my selective color. Everything else will be turned into black and white. And you can select up to three different colors. This is a really fun effect that works for photography and also in the video mode too. I think the effects options are really fun to play with. So I hope you have a good time playing around with those. Now, just as we were able to move the focus area around when we were talking about still photography earlier in the video, when you're doing video, again, your subject may not be in the middle of the frame. So once again, you can move the focus area around just by using the buttons on the back of the camera. This is nice and easy. But with the video mode, you also have options to use different focus modes. This is accessed using the I button. When recording a video, you can move your focus area around easily by using the multi-selector tool, just as you would if you were taking a photo. Pressing the I button brings up your shortcuts, and we're gonna take another look at the focus area mode options. Press OK. Default for me is wide. This is great for landscapes and maybe group photos or video. Uh, next is normal, where you can be a bit more specific about your focus area. There is a face priority option, but we're gonna take a quick look at the tracking mode, which is for videoing moving subjects. I press OK to select. I then, to make it work, need to change my focus mode to auto focus or full time servo mode. And once these two are set, we exit by pressing the I button. We press OK. And what you should see now is as I move the subject, the camera tracks the subject. This is a pretty neat mode. Now you may recall earlier in the video, I mentioned something called rack focus. Now rack focus is a technique where you shift the focus from one subject to another. It's a really cool technique. I use it a lot in my videos and it's also used a lot in the movies and it's actually relatively easy to do. What you're actually doing is you're adjusting the focus manually whilst you're recording your video. Let me show you how it's done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select manual focus, go to my focus modes, press OK, select MF for manual focus, press OK again to select, and press the I button to clear the screen. Now at the moment, the camera has focused on the subject in the front, in the foreground, and the background figure is clearly blurry. Now what I wanna do is switch the focus between the two. So to do this, let's start recording. All I've gotta do is grab the focus ring on the lens and very gently turn it and you'll see the background coming into focus. The foreground is now out of focus, and if I turn the focus ring the other way, we can switch back. This is how you do rack focus. It can be a bit fiddly, but it's a really cool effect.
So I hope you've enjoyed the video and picked up some great tips. If you did, please give us a thumbs up because it really helps my channel. If you're new here, I post weekly videos, all designed to help you get more from your digital camera. So please consider subscribing. You can leave your comments, questions, and suggestions down below. I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.